Hey, this is Steve Good on the Coin Chat with Yuri Cataldo, and we are joined by Crypto Beatles or Robert Beatles or the CEO of Monarch. Take your pick, Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the president, the president of Monarch. Yes, Nay Bot's the CEO. Oh, you're the president of Monarch. Yeah, I'm the janitor, man. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> you got your broom. I'm, I want to see like the the, Mo the Monarch branded broom, so we see what it's all about. Exactly, man. <laughs> <laughs> so. Before we jump into all sorts of bits and pieces, just quickly tell people what the Monarch wallet is in case they don't know. And it's not like, you know, it's not like one of these guys. I mean, obviously it's not a real wallet. It's something far more exciting for adoption in crypto. It's very real. You can use it today. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, what the Monarch wallet is basically in a nutshell is it's um, a place to hold all the best companies and all the best services in crypto in one application through one login through one KYC. So you don't need to have 5,000 apps doing five different things in crypto. You can have one and it gives you access to all the coolest stuff. So yeah. right, right now you can go to Apple or Google and you can download the Monarch wallet. So of course you can store, you know, the major cryptocurrencies on it, but you can also buy and sell cryptos. You can earn interest on cryptos. You can uh, check the market, your portfolio, you own the seed, the keys, all that kind of stuff. And we'll be adding more and more services in there like uh, decentralized chat, file storage, games, you name it, everything that's, you know, blockchain related, all into one location with one login, and one app. That's cool. So how do you do wow. the interest payments on that? I mean, what's, who's funding the, the interest? Oh, it's just, it's fake money. It's crypto, right? Just, you know, you just print more. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to call up uh, Vitalik over at Ethereum and say, hey, mate, listen, you know, we're, we've got like 10,000 Ether. At a decimal. Yeah, interest, it's, it's, so. yeah. You know? Exactly, man. It's it's like the Federal Reserve, right? Just uh, move a decimal point, you know, add a couple zeros. <laughs> so this is this is called Monarch <laughs> Fractional Reserve. <laughs> yeah, no. So basically, you know, our, our partner is Celsius. That's uh, Alex Mashinsky, the creator of VoIP. He has a company called Celsius. And what they do is um, basically if you have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, you know, basically a whole bunch of different uh, coins, you deposit them. Uh, with them on a BitGo account and you essentially earn interest paid to you in that cryptocurrency that you're basically staking or earning interest on. So if you have a bunch of Bitcoin and you want to move it from cold storage, you know, to the, uh, the BitGo storage, you know, say you got a Bitcoin, you put it over there and you can earn like 7% interest on it and then you can take it back whenever you want. The, uh, the caveat is how, how does this happen, right? Well, basically yeah. when, when you move the crypto over to their wallet, they use it for people to, uh, to receive loans. And so now you're basically getting interest, you know, from the people that uh, are paying interest on the loans that they're receiving in your crypto. So it's, it's kind of like this way to just remove banking system, remove the traditional banking system altogether and kind of go peer to peer of sorts to where when you have, you know, your crypto on a cold storage wallet like Monarch, you just move it over to the hot wallet. You start earning interest on it. Whenever you want it back, you just, you know, basically hit withdraw and it goes right back to your cold storage. So it's, it's kind of cool for people that, you know, want to, you know, take a little bit of a risk where they're not holding their seat anymore, but you know, they're tired of just, you know, seeing their crypto just sit on the wallet and do nothing. Yeah. So if they, you know, if they got a little, a little bit of a appetite for risk, not having their seat or their key for that crypto, they can earn some interest on it. So, so That's far people love it. It's been great. I mean, that, that's just, yeah. that's for me, that's just like a, a no brainer for like when you start target, targeting people in countries where they may not even have bank accounts and suddenly they say, oh, I have like, you know, my, my wallet and I can, if I can get some coins in there and I can get some interest in there, then actually you're giving them some passive income. And sometimes, you know, that 7% might mean a lot to some people. Yeah. I mean, if you look at a yeah. traditional bank, I mean, you're still at their mercy. If you have all your money in the bank account, you're yeah. lucky if you're getting one percent. Truly, you're lucky if you're getting one yeah. percent. But again, they have final say over your money too. It's not really yours. Yeah, you may own it. It may be your money that you deposited, but they're going to tell you how much you can take out, when you can take it out. And if you know the government says, hey, you know what? This isn't a good actor. Let's lock it down. They can do that. With, with crypto, it's a lot more difficult. So Yeah, no, uh, I've actually had a friend who just like, uh, posted in a, like one of our group chats that he had his, his bank account was taken down, two of his credit cards taken down. And he was like, I have no idea why. And he tried to call them and they're like, you can send a letter to the post office box and we'll, uh, we'll respond to that. It's like, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the natural response was, you can download the Monarch wallet, mate. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. and again, the interest is just one of a plethora of services that we currently offer and that we're going to be offering. And, you know, it's just bringing the best services and companies in crypto into one place. So yeah. the Monarch wallet itself is decentralized. We don't even have your email address. So you can, you can download it right now you know, put your crypto on it. It has a decentralized exchange built into it, into it as well. So mm -hmm. you could actually start exchanging ERC-20 tokens within the wallet without us even knowing your email address. You know, so I mean, there's there's a lot of cool stuff that it does today. And then of course, over the next, you know, weeks, months, years, it's just gonna be like the go-to spot for everything crypto through one app. So the awesome. best and brightest, all those companies, all those services all in one spot with one login. I love it. That's very cool. Yeah, download it today. Uh, well, I've got it. You know, I've got it because yeah. I, I helped you find a little bug in there, and you helped you helped me. I love it. Out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's great. And that's that's one of the one of the really cool things too is you know when you build something for the community, you know, you you're able to have like an army of beta testers that you know tell you the stuff that they that they absolutely hate about it, that they love about it, a tiny little bug, something like that. You know, it's 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 really uh, it's just it's amazing. You know, the yeah. community that we've, uh, that we've got and, you know, just the people that use it and, you know, the feedback that we get, it's, it's priceless. It really is. That's awesome. Yeah. Robert, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about just your journey into crypto because you've started multiple companies, including a construction company. So how did you go from your first company to what you're doing now with Monarch and, and even deeper than that in the, in the crypto space? All right. Well, I'll try to sum everything up. Wild, you were laughing there. So, if you want to give us the short version, yeah, the long that's, version another time. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 what I was trying to like calculate sure. in your brain is how uh, deep do I go here, right? Or you so can just speak faster. I'll just do like a fast play version of it afterwards. Yeah. For people. I love it. I love it. You just turn me into an auctioneer. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, I guess I'll just roll back to the beginning a little bit. Um, I've been with my wife since we were 14 years old. So 27 years later, we were still together. Wow. And, um, you know, getting married at 17 with our, our first kid, um, you know, was, was very tough. So uh, construction wow. is something that I knew. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we definitely didn't want to be on welfare and food stamps and, and, and all that type of stuff, you know, for, you know, for too long. So I, uh, I went into construction because I already had kind of a background in it. And I built up. Um, you know, a company that I was working for, I built up his company. And one day he and I got into it. He, uh, he's, he's manic depressant, uh, manic depressant, schizophrenic, bipolar, no joke. Wow. And uh, he was, he was a lot of fun to work with. And he just told me, <laughs> the he's like, hey, cocktail. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the trifecta, right? <laughs> and uh, he, he was a lot of fun to work with. You know, he's kind of like walking on eggshells all the time. But, you know, I remember very clearly he said, you know, if you can do a better job, then go start your own company. And so I quit that day and I did. And, you know, within a few years, I'd uh, built up, you know, one of the largest construction service companies, you know, in California. And I've just, you know, continued to, to grow it and grow it and grow it. And around 2009, before construction, I'd always been kind of techie, um, you know, always had my, my little Amigas, my Commodore 64s, had my bulletin board systems, all that kind of stuff. And uh, so it allowed me in 2009, being so the, the company was running without me, didn't need me anymore for all the day-to-day -day stuff. It allowed me to kind of go back to my roots and to uh, get back into software. And so we built a, a software company. I'm yeah, almost sure. laughing because you're like, I went from Commodore to 2009. It was like, there's a time warp somewhere in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could talk like, about the 186 DX. 1984, yeah. baby. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I was trying to trim this down for you. I mean, I didn't want to talk about everything oh, in between. I like, I like the whole time warp experience. That was amazing. I went from Commodore <laughs> to 2009 in like 10 seconds or less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, obviously, I'd had a couple of computers before and in, enduring in and um, obviously did some programming in between. Yeah. But um, we started, I, well, I guess... The reason why I got into software in 2009 or created the software company was a, a product I created for the post office. It was uh, one of the world's first reusable envelopes. So we can go all over the place. I can talk about all the different things I've created, invented. And, but anyways, I want to try to sum this up for you as, as briefly as I can. So I created a, you know, an envelope that had multiple uses, mm -hmm. you know, worked with uh, the post office. They saw some tech that I had created, which was a greeting card. Okay, here we go. Hold on. So there's a greeting card that we created that allowed for you to put your own photo or video 
or digital gift card within it. So we created all the software, all the tech to create the world's first paper greeting card mm -hmm. that, you know, I just put a video, a photo or, or a digital gift card. And they instantly saw value in that, not so much for the greeting card side of things, but for things within the postal department itself. Right. And so we built up a, a relationship with the post office and started building applications and, and platforms for them. And then um, around 2011, this guy named Max Kaiser, you know, starts coming out telling us about Bitcoin. Tells us, you know, how it's, uh, you know, going to free the world, how the 2008 financial collapse was because of all the, the central banks and big institutions and how all this can be avoided in the future because of this thing called Bitcoin. So around 2011, I kind of dove down that rabbit hole, got bit by the bug, and it just, you know, kind of, you know, really just, you know, took roots with me. And so everybody that I knew me. So I think you meant bit by the coin. Yeah, exactly. Bit by the coin. <laughs> I like those cheesy jokes. <laughs> those dad jokes are awesome. <laughs> oh, no, dad jokes, dad jokes. Yuri's not a dad yet, but you know, you know, Robert, you and I can make all the dad jokes we like. <laughs> well, you said bit by the coin. I think that's well, bit by the bug. Uh, Bitcoin, though. So. <laughs> yep, got bit by the coin. But um, yeah, that was around 2011. And uh, anyways, people that knew me knew that I was in the space. And around 2017. The market went crazy. Everybody started hitting me up saying, hey, you know, should I buy this? Should I sell this? How do I buy it? How do I sell it? What do I do with it? You know, all these, you know, simple questions that I was just getting hit with, you know, hundreds of times, you know, a week, you know, thousands of times. It, it was it was ridiculous. And so some of my friends said, hey, why don't you just do a video on YouTube for us that kind of explains all the nuances, all the basics. And then that way you don't have to keep answering all the questions over and over again. Wow. So I did that for them, and this was back in uh, 2017 or something like that, where I made these videos for them, just kind of showing them just kind of how to navigate the crypto waters. Yep. Next thing you know, it kind of took off, and they wanted more and more and more, and so they wanted me to start, you know, vetting projects. So I started introducing uh, them to different projects that they asked me to via the founders and CEOs and bringing them on the channel and having them talk about what they're doing in the space and why we should care and all of that kind of cool stuff. And anyways, it's grown to where I think I've interviewed, you know, over a thousand people brought, um, I think four or 500 uh, people onto the channel. Uh, it's myself and my oldest son that do this, you know, just for, for free. We never, ever charge anything for, to anybody who just give it, uh, give it away to the world for free. And, and to get people into crypto, even from, I think the first video, we always gave away a hundred dollars of cryptocurrency on every single video. So that way people could get into crypto on my dime. So I didn't feel bad, you know, if they ended up, you know, doing something stupid, you know, they lost my money, not theirs. And so that way was a way for me to get friends and family involved into crypto on my dime. And I've just kept doing that, you know, I don't know, three, four, 500 times. And every single, every single video we do, we just give away more money and it allows them to get into crypto. And it kind of took off. And um, anyways, we became like the face of TradingView sessions. So TradingView is one of the most uh, you know, respected trading platforms out there. We have a, a show there. Uh, again, I don't ever charge anything for any of this stuff. And then uh, we're also, on, we have a TV show too. It's in like 46 million households where we talk about cryptocurrencies and the different nuances of the projects and all that kind of cool stuff. And cool. Um, I guess where, where to Monarch. The show if they want to watch the TV show. Uh, it's on Biz TV. You can just type in Biz TV. And I think we're on Mondays and I think Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, something like that. I think we're on four times a week. So. Oh my God, you have time for wow. it? Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's, you know, God's been great to us, man. So I've, uh, you know, built up a lot of really successful, you know, companies with uh, really great people and, and family. And it allows us to do this kind of stuff, you know, just, just for fun with me and the kid. Uh, Monarch, on the other hand, was something we built for the people because there was no real uh, way to, you know, to basically store your cryptocurrency and, and be in charge of it and have it user friendly and have that kind of nice user experience that, uh, you know, grandma or somebody could use. It was always super complicated paper wallets, crazy wallets that, you know, were here one day and gone the next. And yeah. so we created, you know, basically just, you know, the, the one app that they would you know, basically ever need for cryptocurrency. And again, we just give that to the world for free. And we, when we launched Monarch, we <laughs> allowed people to download it right from day one. And every week it just gets better and better and better. And so anyways, I can keep rambling, but uh, let me know <laughs> where you want to dive into. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> Who's the, um... It's been a long day already. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I mean, I hear you. I'm over in London. It's a little bit further ahead than so <laughs> I know the feeling. Who, who would yeah. you say is the most, I don't know, I'll say either crazy or most memorable guest you've had on the show in all the time you've been running on the- on Max the Kaiser. Max yeah. Kaiser is, Max Kaiser is by far the, the most, um, 
I would say, you know, he's, he's incredibly smart. Um, he's got, uh, he's very vocal, um, but he flies off the handle at very just unsuspecting times. Like, you know, we'd just be talking like this. Next thing you know, he's just out of his seat screaming, you know, F Jamie Diamond. And then he goes back to being completely just coherent and sane and just talking like we are right now. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. It was, <laughs> it was just like, it was like some kind of animated, you know, cartoon show, you know, it's like, it was, it was pretty incredible. He's, he's such an intelligent guy. He's so kind so of like cocktail type people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's one incredible dude, man. But uh, he'll just, you know, fly off the handles for a second and then go right back, right back to just being, you know, low key and normal and then just fly off the handles and right back to low key and normal. <laughs> so that it keeps you on your seat. You're right on the edge of your seat. It's always, uh, it's always fun. How do you go about getting all the guests? You have to do a lot of phone calling and emailing people or is anyone on the team that's doing it or is it everyone just coming to you? No, they mostly just come to us and then we'll just, um, you know, vet them. So mostly everything comes, you know, via the community. So the community is the one that tells us who they want us to, you know, to interview. So we'll say, Hey, if you want us to interview them, have them hit us up and then they'll hit us up and then we'll just figure out a time that works for both of us and, and bring them on. But it's mostly just for the community. We don't, I don't usually, you know, go outside of that and, and search people out. They usually come to us. That's awesome. That's really cool. I love that. Really yeah. cool. Um, so tell, tell us a little bit more about you know, the outside world. I mean, forget about the crypto for a minute. What, what's keeping you so you're busy in the, in, the, in the real, like, who's the real Robert Beatles? Dude, all I know is work. That's yeah. so. That is well, what do you do for fun then? <laughs> work, man. I, I build businesses for fun. Like I'm I'm like the most boring dude, you know. Like uh, that's like you know the wife they'll 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 want us to go on vacations and stuff like that, and 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 I'll go, but I'll be the guy you know on the back of the boat or whatever on my laptop, you know, working. You know, I'll I'll make I'll make time for my you know stoke or something like that, but. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, for me, just, you know, spending time with, uh, you know, family and friends and building stuff together is is really what I love to do. You know, I mean, I've got lots of friends that are, you know, celebrities that, you know, I could be doing all kinds of crazy stuff with them, but I'd much rather be uh, just building stuff and, and adding value to the world because at the end of the day, we're only here for, you know, a little while and I'd rather leave my mark, you know, adding adding value and giving people stuff that they can use versus just going out and having a great time and yeah. <laughs> Kind of being a, I don't know, just uh, you know, a little blip, you know, that was here for a second and gone, and didn't do much other than party and have a good time. You mean, so. you mean being a little right. beetle? Yeah, there you go, a little beetle. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, it's spelled different than the Beatles, but uh. <laughs> you're more like a giant beetle that's just like, don't mess with me, I'm a big beetle. You can't squish me. <laughs> so what do you think about this Facebook thing? So, you know, for years, I've been telling people that uh, cryptocurrency is like the biggest enslavement of people or the biggest, you know, liberator of the people. And, and it's simply because with cryptocurrency, you know, it's freedom like Bitcoin. You can go anywhere in the world and have, you know, total control of your currency and be able to spend it without anybody telling you what you can do with it. Whereas you can get somebody that could totally control your finances and lock you out or decide that you're not a very good human and uh, basically shut down your access to your funds or there's just so many different uh, little things that, the, that a big, you know, powerful, you know, Fed or Facebook type coin or something like that could, could mean they already have our personal information. Now they'll have our financial information and who's to say who's to stop them if they decide that they want to cut us off from our funds or what they're going to do with that data. So it is a little scary in that sense. But one of the things that I really love about it is that every time LibraCoin or GlobalCoin or Facebook or whatever is brought up in the cryptocurrency arena, you know, when it's talked about on TV or news articles, you know what they're bringing up right next to it? Bitcoin. And so you can see that Bitcoin has been going up in value because everybody's starting to realize, hold on a second here, this Bitcoin thing maybe isn't such a bubble. Maybe it isn't such a scam. Maybe right. there's some legit yeah. to it because now you got all these news people and regulators saying how great Bitcoin is and how scary Facebook is. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, even like the Bank of England was like commenting about on like, well, we're not really sure about this Facebook thing. So we're going to just sort of, we're going to just, like, <laughs> they were, I mean, Carney's always been very, the, the head of the Bank of England, he's always been very reticent of crypto everything, and he's always been very negative. But with Facebook, he was like, well, it's Facebook, so we're going to let them sort of have a little bit of leeway. But you could tell he was, I mean, his, his tone was not, welcome to England. I mean, come, let's, let's have crypto. It was more like, we've got you. We're, we're watching you. You know, it's like, you know, it's one of these sort of things. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, they got close to 3 billion users. And so when when they launch their cryptocurrency, whether it's a crypto or, or not, I mean, it's they're saying it is, but again, it's it's not like a Bitcoin type, you know, peer-to-peer transaction method of sorts. It's more of a hundred of the most powerful corporations on the planet running nodes yeah. that, um, you know, have a, a centralized network that they're saying is decentralized. Yeah. They accidentally sorts. get our, get their hands on our data as they transmit the information and it's a permissioned centralized ledger. So that hardly makes sure. it decentralized in any form or fashion. Yeah. You know, you got these hundred corporations that are basically ponying up, you know, $10 million to Facebook to run a node. So you 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 end up with tons of money that are supposedly or assets backing up their Libra coin, creating a less volatile stable coin of sorts used on their platforms. So in theory, you know, basically 1.7 billion underbanked people could have a bank overnight. Three billion people could be able to take their currency anywhere in the world with them and spend it however they want. Uh, you know, it could do a lot of great things. However, we've seen Zuckerberg's past quotes, you know, where he calls us all a bunch of effing, you know, retards and stuff like that. And he can't believe that we actually just give him his, in, give him, you know, our information. So when you have somebody like that at the helm, it, it makes you really question his motives. Like, is he really doing this for the betterment of the people? Right. Or did he find a new way to control the world, right? So, well, I mean, I, I often, I mean, Yuri and I have often had discussions about projects like Steam It, where you have, whales that control the who gets their content promoted or not and we've talked about eos and its little mini cartel which is not consensus and i look at facebook and i think you know yuri and i've had conversations about this where we've said is this not just another form of a cartel where hey i got a good idea hey you know robert i've got an idea for you how about you give me 10 million dollars and I'm going to give you access to 3 billion people's data every time they transmit it and all you have to do is just it's just give me $10 million and that's all it costs to access all that data. But of course, because it's a decentralized internet, you know, no one will know that it's actually just running through your systems and, and how, you know, how we can all really be sheep and prove that to Zuckerberg if that's really what he's been saying. And then he's just proving the point by doing this because he's flaunting it in our faces and we're suckers to actually fall for it. I left Facebook two years ago, by the way. I have not gone back. I only use it for live feeds and for posting stuff for our show, but my per, privately I'm off of it for two years now, but um, yeah, it's yeah. that kind of stuff that frightens me because you know, <laughs> it's like, where are we really going with this one guys? I mean, I would love, I, I'm like you, I want the unbanked to be banked. I want them to have insurance. I want them the ability to have, um, you're, you, you and I are talking about this last night, right? What was it that you said about the, <laughs> particularly about the unbanked or the, yeah. Oh, Owning property, like that's like the, another one of the title big rights. issues. Title rights, yeah. Yeah, healthcare. IDs, yeah. just having a, a proof of who you are and have access to your birth certificate. Yeah, that's I a mean, difficult was, issue. Listen, Accenture did a study and it was like 33% of the world is unbanked. 33%. And, you know, my wife, Polly, who you know also, and she also works with our show, She she's from Poland. 20% of Poland is unbanked. I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. I said, you know what? We need to start spending more time in Poland and start fixing that because that's not okay. My grandmother's from Poland. Um, you know, her whole family's from Poland. So we actually did a trip about a week ago and spent time with the Polish Blockchain Association. And I mean, we're literally there talking with like the leaders of Poland in crypto who all came in from, from Warsaw. They came from Krakow. They came from Poznan and all sorts of other parts of the country. And they're just there like, right, what do we have to do? So we, she and I both did presentations talking about it and adoption's a big thing, but my God, it's like, you guys need to solve your own country problem. If we could just build apps for these people and give them access to basic services, like, you know, they probably don't even have healthcare because they don't even, they may not have IDs because they don't, and they don't have banking and they can't get insurance. And how is that fair, right? Sure. Um, yeah, you know, blockchain offers a lot of value. It really does. But then again, like I said, it could be Pandora's box where Facebook, their global coin, their Libra coin, whatever you want to call it, you know, it could basically be the, I mean, it could be the big business of the globe, right? It could be like the total privatization or institution, institutionalization of big business into our, into our lives, 
you know, for everything, right? Imagine a hundred of the, the biggest corporations on the planet all controlling our finances. You know, Visa, MasterCard, central banks, regular banks, all of them could be a thing of the past. This could be like the, uh, the global currency that crushes everything. You could have the, because some of these corporations are, you know, they're larger than governments. They're larger than, than countries. You know what I mean? This, we're talking, yeah. they got the people, they got the yeah. money, they got the tech, and now they got the currency. This, uh, this could be like an end game type thing where it basically becomes the global coin. So it's, you well, know, the MasterCard think, banks, they should call, all be worried. Some would yeah. call conspiracy theory or would call it Illuminati or would call it one world, one world order. Stop. <laughs> um, and then of course, if you do your research, you'll find out that the words conspiracy theory are actually planted into our heads by the media. And most of the media companies are all rolled up to one or two wealthy families. So um, five families. Yep. Five families, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you've done your research too. <laughs> like I said, you know, if you want to go dark, you know, then this could be like the uh, the currency killer that basically enslaves the masses into one global coin that everybody has to use. And if you're not a good human in their in their in their viewpoint, uh, you can lose all your all your financing. So that could be that could be scary. Or you can look at it as far as you know. 1.7 billion underbank people now have bank accounts, and if they're good, if they're good corporations, and they don't do the evil stuff that we fear that they might do, this could be one of the best things ever for you know for the globe. Who knows? Yeah, but, I, I, I yeah, totally. It's be agree. one or the other. That's for sure. I, I really do hope that there's something good that comes from all of this, and I think the problem is it's a lot of wait and see right now that we have to do to wait till we get to a point where we find out, you know, are they going to do the good thing and the right thing, or are we all going to stand here on the sidelines and say? Let's have a war with Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> well, the regulators are terrified because, you know, this, this thing called fiat money, this, uh, this paper dollar that uh, they rule the world with as a global currency could pretty much overnight be replaced by, you know, Libra coin. So they see that, you know, they, you know, it's like going from, you know, trading chickens to trading silver to trading paper to now this digital currency. And so you're seeing these uh, leaps and bounds in, in progress, you know, here in a relatively short time since yeah. 2009 and now. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they're not scared, they should be. And I think we can see the uh, the rhetoric in the news that they're they're very scared. So yeah, uh, it's just, yeah the, the message is to see what happens. very right. polarized or toward um, negativity. Uh, to, so, but it's funny how they've kind of like, They've taken their eye off the Bitcoin negativity for a bit so they could focus on something else. <laughs> yeah, and you can see Bitcoin's yeah, starting to go up. Yeah, starting to get some, some credibility. Oh, we forgot to tell people how bad it is. Oh, no, what happened? It went up. Oops. Exactly. <laughs> I can almost afford a node now. <laughs> Thanks to Bitcoin going up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, that's funny. So, um, so what's the future for the Monarch wallet? I mean, do you have like sort of like a, a bigger plan beyond like the app? Like, you know, as far as building a company or building services into different communities, or is this more of a grassroots, see where it takes us as part of an experience and journey? Yeah, I mean, what it, what it will be is the, the one place to go for everything crypto and blockchain. So you have the Monarch Wallet, um, you'll have the Monarch, you know, Marketplace, and basically all the best companies, all the best services will be in one place for you. And you'll be able to log in with one login, one KYC have access to everything crypto, everything blockchain, and uh, all from one place that you can take with you anywhere in the world. So we've already got a, a really good start on it, and we're just going to keep adding more and more services and companies to it, and just adding more and more value to people for free. So there's no you know monthly subscription fee. There's none of that stuff. You know where where we'll make our money is you know on transaction fees, charging the merchant you know for you know crypto to fiat. We we acquired our broker dealer license. We'll have a STO launch platforms, all that kind of stuff. And oh, so that's really we'll cool. Make, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll make money, you know, from the, you know, from the, from the merchant side of things and try to always make sure that it's, you know, free for the customers as much as possible. Obviously there's, there's fees that you can't get around. Like when they're using credit cards to buy crypto, yeah. you know, there's, it's just, so it is what it is. Chargebacks as well. Yeah. What's that? You have a credit card on ramp. Yeah. Yeah. We have bank uh, on ramps. We have credit card on ramps. All this stuff's live today. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't so know this, this isn't like, you know, some, you know, pie in the sky idea. This is, this is done. You know, we're no, just I adding. Mean, I mean, I've got the wallet app already. I've had it for probably a few months already. I just didn't spot the, the onboarding with the credit card probably because it just didn't need to, but that's a great yeah. feature. 
did you see that buy button? <laughs> no, I was too busy looking at the coin market cap of Bitcoin prices. <laughs> yeah, got when stuck you, on when that screen that, and they couldn't get off it. Yeah, when you click the old buy button, it'll give you an option, credit card or bank account. So obviously uh, when you hook up a bank account, there's a, a KYC process through all that stuff. Um, credit card's pretty instantaneous. Uh, banks, you know, it's, it's a dinosaur legacy system, so we still have to yeah. play their games and do the KYC and all that kind of stuff. You know, it can take anywhere from 15 minutes to a couple of days, depending yeah. on, you know, where you live. But um, right. yeah, we're just going to keep dropping more and more value. And, um, you know, hopefully people just, you know, continue to keep using it. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we'll, we'll stop, we'll stop doing it when people stop using it. But everybody just keeps, uh, you know, jumping on more and more and more and asking for more and more services and, and different things that they can do with it. So it's, uh, That's you know, okay. again, so, you it's, know, here's, here's a question it's, it's tough you. to beat when it's free, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> exactly. So one of the questions that we get, we get asked a lot on the show uh, and from our, our followers is not about so much the onboarding and the credit card side, it's how do I spend it? Now, of course, we can, we can issue out debit cards that are Visa, MasterCard debit cards, and then we can convert the crypto to fiat to, to transact, or we can try to have like a QR code and for the very few limited places that have it, we can spend it. But do you, do you what, what's, what's, what's your view in terms of, you know, you're in this space building this app, What's your view in terms of where are we in the world of crypto and what do we need to do to start getting the adoption so we can actually start spending it? Sure. So right now there's, there's still kind of a stigma that it's, you know, basically risky. It's scary. It's just for porn or for bad actors. And there's still a little bit of that stigma. It's, it's getting better and better. Um, And as businesses, when you start having a big business like Facebook or somebody like that, and they start transacting in crypto for goods and services and allowing their user base to do that. I realize we're about a year out, but that's going to do amazing things. I mean, you got 80 million businesses on Facebook that are going to instantly be able to start, you know, conversing with people via crypto. And so you kind of need that first really big person to come into the space and say, hey, we're using crypto. And then when you start seeing, you know, like the companies paying their employees in crypto, when you start seeing, you know, more and more Bitcoin signs on people's doors, you know, the, their marketplaces, their, their storefront, stuff like that, that's, that's when you're going to start seeing it take off. And we're still probably a year or two away from that. But in the meantime, you know, we can definitely do like ATM and credit cards that are backed by crypto. So we yeah. have partners. We have partners that we're doing that with. Um, obviously, as more and more uh, businesses allow for crypto payments, more and more people start doing that. But one of the biggest hindrances right now to people using crypto is they're using it for speculation. You know what I mean? They're using it for speculation. So they don't want to spend it because they're afraid it's going to be worth more. So there really needs to be an awesome stable coin that people, instead of getting paid in dollars or in euros, pounds, whatever, they're getting paid in that stable coin. Hopefully it's not Libra coin, but anyways, <laughs> I, I kind of, it's I probably going to be. You got full silk girl here. Like, oh, how did we end up back at Libra coin again? <laughs> That's what it's going to take, man. Honestly, oh, it's going to take something like that that is pegged because uh, let's face it, you know, who wants to buy a burger for five bucks in Bitcoin today that's 15 bucks next week, right? Yeah. Who wants to, you know, get get their paycheck for $800 in Bitcoin for this week and then they wake up Monday morning and it's $200. Yeah. You know, it's like, what just happened? Well, it's interesting so, you say about it being pegged because actually if everyone's operating on the same coin, the peg is irrelevant. We're only sure. taking it to something we already know in order to transfer, transfer ourselves to something else that we know. But if you look at the exchange rate of currencies, let's say the, you know, the dollar euro exchange rate or say the dollar pound. I, I remember when I was backpacking around Europe and it was like the pound was $2, was sort of $2 to one pound, which was extraordinary. It was like, you never see that. So even in the, you know, in the world of fiat exchanging of dollars to euros or euros to pounds or pounds to yen or whatever it is, there's still fluctuation. But the fact is that when you're in that country, you don't see it. It's only when you leave the country and you travel somewhere else and go, oh God, it's so expensive to travel here. God, I better not go there. I'll go somewhere else that's cheaper. But if we move to a global currency where everyone were actually using Bitcoin, then the actual value of Bitcoin would be Bitcoin. <laughs> I mean, that, that is, that is the dream, right? The value between Bitcoin and Litecoin or Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash or whatever else is out there, there, there wouldn't be a need for pegging Right. Yeah. I no. That, that is. That, yeah. Sure. That that is the dream. But basically, with a with a with a true stable token, if they were able to use baskets of currencies, fiat currencies from all over the world, the arbitrage would be small between them because they would sure. all be lumped into one basket together. Trying to get 
Bitcoin only as the new global currency. I love that idea. Don't get me wrong. The, the libertarian <laughs> would love to see that. I thought you were going to shoot me down. Oh my God, what's going to happen next? <laughs> yeah, there's no way that'll ever happen. There's no way that the, the big banks, the central banks, everybody's going to embrace Bitcoin and say, okay, this is the new global coin. It's just never going to happen. So I know there's people out there that say it could, but no way. You know, everybody should know how bankers think and they're going to want their own crypto. They're going to want their own thing that they can control. Yeah. And I realize right. they can look at the ledger, you know, they can, it's, it's immutable so they can see where Bitcoin goes. Some people even say they have the ability to stop it and to freeze it. And they're the ones that actually created it. You can go on however crazy dark and, and controversial and conspiracy theorist you want to go. Um, I'm just saying, I, I don't think Bitcoin will ever be the global currency. I think you're going to need, um, you're going to need thousands of different cryptocurrencies. You're going to need thousands, just like we have now. Uh, as far as one global one, that that's what's scary about Facebook is it could actually be that one because of their user base. So, yeah. Anyways, well, you know, it's interesting because the U.S. at one stage had as many as eight thousand currencies in the early days when currencies were first starting. Did you know yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, there was tons and yeah. Pretty much anybody that ever messed with the Federal Reserve dollar, um, they didn't, it didn't do too well for them. So if you just look through history, oh, right, right. <laughs> go, go back from you know go back from Lincoln to Kennedy to Reagan, anybody that's ever tried messing with it, Jackson, you know, <laughs> it hasn't turned out so well for them. So well, yeah, because the one guy that uh, messed with the dollar the most and took it off of the gold reserve ended up, uh, well, <laughs> in a lot of trouble. That's Nixon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think uh, John F. Kennedy, um, he did the uh, Federal Reserve Act where he, rem where he basically abolished the Fed. I think it was, uh, that was uh, the day that he died or the day before he died. And then uh, Johnson came back and did the Federal Reserve Act of 1111, the night that uh, Kennedy was assassinated from Air Force One re-instituting re or, or bringing the, the Fed back. So you might want to look into that one if you really want a conspiracy theory. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, I had not heard of that one. Yeah, he, he like ended yeah. the Fed, and then he was assassinated that day. And then Lyndon B. Johnson that night made it uh, made it go live again with like Act One 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 One, if I remember right. So, so uh, depending I, on how, how conspiracy theorist you want to go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've got another idea. Let's ask our, our listeners and our subscribers if they want to hear us talk conspiracy theory, and we'll just <laughs> let's just have an off piece episode. We're not going to talk crypto. So, if anybody wants to get in on a conspiracy <laughs> theory discussion. Just for fun, the three of us will do. Yuri's probably the least of the conspiracy. I don't know, Yuri. Are you much of a anti-conspiracy theory guy like me and Beatles? Because I think Beatles and I are on the same page here a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm kind of in the middle on that one, but I I like hearing and reading about all the different types of things. So I'm gonna put myself in the middle of there. Well, I, I'm just gonna throw it out there, Beatles. It's sort of like an open invitation that if, if our listeners and our subscribers want to hear us talk about conspiracy theory for one episode, just for fun. Dude, I could, I could do it all day long. Uh, that's one of the things that I do for fun is, you know, I will read um, a lot. So I, I love to read. And, um, you know, there's so much information out there. So much information. Yeah. And not all that's true. And some of it's just, you know, it's just crazy talk, right? But it's still right. fun to talk about it and come up with their own opinions based off of it. And, you know, God only knows if it's true or not, right? That's why they call it conspiracy theorists. If it was 100% right. provable, it'd be called fact. Right. So, Have you, heard, yeah, you heard about the Mandela effect? Yeah, just just like aliens, right? Nobody knows, right? But people like to talk about it because it's, right. it's it's entertaining, it's interesting, it's it's something you know a little bit different from just the the daily you know BS of you know everything else that they hear on the news. It's That's for sure. it's uh, it's always fun to you know talk you know mm -hmm. talk crazy sometimes. <laughs> well, you saw with that Navy pilot, you know, that had photographed something and they put it out in the press and said, "Look, we don't even know what it is," and the Navy's admitted they don't even know what it is. I mean, they have the if we want to go aliens, they had the something else. What was that? Yeah, well, if you want to go alien talk, man, there's if 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 you do believe in aliens, there's plenty of uh, pictures and testimonies and all kinds of things out there supporting it. And uh, Genesis six supports it right from the beginning, as far as aliens. So they angels from you know from heaven were thrown to earth. So there you go, the world's first uh, aliens. So <laughs> it's it's fact, baby. The, the oldest one of the yeah. oldest books in existence, you know, proves it. Right. <laughs> oh, there's there's lots of really weird examples of stuff like that. I mean, if you look on some of the old pyramid symbolic symbolic stuff there's there's drawings of like very large beings that were with us and there's drawings of these round disc type you know like rounded like discs up in the sky and it's like well what the hell is that i mean it's a drawing it's kind of like what we see today in drawings but you know 
we could just take it with a grain of salt and then maybe they they had fantastic imaginations or they we or they have the same imagination and they just carried it forward into like you know our i don't know it's it's weird stuff right it's just kind of interesting or or you could just open up the oldest book genesis 6 and it tells you exactly what happened man it tells you that the, they threw the angels down to earth they bred with humans they created all these crazy giants and all these weird things and uh, they created the pyramids, all, all kinds of stuff. And then God said, oh, wow, what did I do? And then he created the flood and wiped them all out. So that's why you don't see all that stuff here today. That is a quick and dirty. But um, if wow. you just read the Bible, man, it talks about it. Really? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Genesis 6. Okay. <laughs> so people are like, you know, whatever happened? Who, who actually built the pyramids? Who actually did all this stuff? Well, yeah. it tells you right in Gen 6. Well, we're going to have to go download the book then, Yuri. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon, I bet you they sell it, you know, I just have to go and buy the thing. <laughs> Do they just sell experts? I just want to buy Genesis 6. I don't want to buy the rest of it, you know. Just I'm sure you could just you could just Google that. There's plenty of free Bible resources online. It's called the internet. Uh, it's yeah. amazing. Well, I'm you know, <laughs> just invented. Have you, have you heard about the Mandela effect? Now that we've really gone down this rabbit hole of conspiracy theory stuff. The Mandela effect? Yeah. So you have to do, Google do you that. Tell us? The Mandela yeah. effect is this, uh, this concept that there are things where we, oh, okay, so I'll give you an example and you tell me the answer and then I'll tell you what it really is now. <laughs> okay, so the Mandela oh, effect, game. <laughs> yeah, this is great. So the Mandela effect is this theory that things have changed over time and if we look back on what our memories tell us it was, it's no longer the case. So, sure. I mean, it's kind of like the victors write history, right? So, <laughs> well, maybe, so let, right. let me give an example and let's just see what happens here. So, um, this is one of the most famous ones that I've come across. And this is, if you've seen the movie Ra uh, Moonraker, the James Bond film? I'm going to say no. Um, sorry. <laughs> so, you, you, did you watch the James Bond films? I, I've seen some of them. Yeah, I mean, I've okay, seen so some of them, but it's tough for me to sit down. That's, that's why I'm standing up right here. It's tough for yeah. me to sit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there was one. There was one James Bond episode or movie where it was with um, Roger Moore, and he was he was this, his his foe was this really tall guy that had bra that had like these metal teeth. Does that ring a bell to you or no? What is it? What does his teeth look like again? Like big, like metal, <laughs> metal teeth. People on the podcast couldn't see your facial expression. That was pretty awesome. Oh, was it? Thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I want to say that I've probably seen, you know, like maybe a clip of, you know, some dude with like uh, a bear trap for teeth. But uh, That's pretty I didn't much what it was. was. Yuri, do you remember that movie? Yes. Yes, I do. It's, it's pretty much a bear trap for teeth. Okay. So let's, let me try this on Yuri then. Because Yuri, we've never talked about this. So at the end of the film... Do you remember what happens with Jaws? His name was Jaws, by the way. Do you remember what happens with Jaws? He meets a no. girl. I, I don't remember that part. <laughs> it's been a while since I watched. I, wow. And uh, Roger, Moore, Roger Moore is not my favorite James Bond. I'm going to just throw it out there for the listeners and yeah. let them all work it out. But basically, he meets a girl at the end of the film, this little girl, blonde hair, and, well... The way I'm I pretty remember, sure you're doing a horrible job of explaining the Mandela effect. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm getting to that now, so I'm going to tell you what it is. So yeah. what happens is that at the end of the film, and what I remember, and I know a lot of other people remember, is that the girl that he meets at the end of the film, she's wearing braces. And so it's like, oh, look, a guy that's got metal trap, bare mouth, meets you know, this little girl. She's like you know, five foot two, and he's like seven foot three. And they meet because she smiles, and she's got braces on. And of course, so it makes sense that they you know, fall in love, and they walk off together. But that's my memory of the film. I mean, I think I know this does all, it's documented. Tons of people remember this. But if you look at the way the film ends now, she doesn't have braces. <laughs> <laughs> Did you saw what you wanted to see at the time? Or somebody just went back and re-rendered the film? No, I, the Mandela effect is basically that somehow the time has changed or something is being changed in our timelines and we don't physically rec rec recognize it happening but things that have happened that we remember have not actually happened. Also, I'll give you another example. So Tom Hanks uh, in the movie uh, Forrest Gump, and he's sitting on the park, park bench with that box of chocolate. What did okay. he say? Do you remember what he said? Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Wrong. That's what we all okay. remember it was. And in fact, that's what Tom Hanks even remembers it was. But that's not what it is anymore. Okay. Oh, so, what is it 
It's I, I don't like remember a the exact box of dog poop. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> like, I think it was changed to life was like a box of chocolates, and then something else. And it's not exactly what you just said. It's what you said is exactly what I remember too. But this this idea of the Mandela effect, and you guys can Google this. It's really fascinating. There's lots of examples where what we people remember hear and was. see what they want to hear and hear hear and see, right? So people well, hear and see what they want to something hear. Something changed. So here's the really weird one about that Jaws example I was telling you about from um, from the, the so movie. it's true. We we live in the Matrix, and so somebody's just messing with the code as we're going along. Is what you're yeah. saying? Yes, well, possibly, <laughs> or maybe something's happening at CERN in Switzerland. Who knows? I mean, here's why the here's why the example of this um, James. Oh, Baldwin. this is going deep. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, I'll, t- I'll tell you why it's interesting about the Mandela effect with this Moonraker. Super one. colliders now. I love yeah. it. Different realities. Okay, <laughs> I see what we're going. Who knows? So the the really weird thing about that ending of the film and the girl not having braces is that there's a commercial that was done in Finland that was like a spoof on the the Moonraker movie. But in that movie, Jaws walks in to go to talk to a teller in the bank, and she's wearing braces. Mm. And they're like obviously playing on a spoof of the movie, but that hasn't changed, and yet she doesn't have braces in the movie anymore. It's kind of like what? It doesn't make sense. So for me, it's like I just I, I I'm pretty sure that my memory's not failing here, and I'm pretty sure she had braces when I watched the film. And if people are watching this, they're going to be like. Hang on a second. She had braces. I'm sure she had braces because that was the, the whole connection. The whole logic of the connection was they both had some metal in their mouths and that's why they walked off together. But the film's not like that anymore. That's what the Mandela effect is. And that's what people talk about. It's one of these weird conspiracy theory things. I think a lot of it is our memories just fail us or they change over time. And it's actually nothing more than just that. But anyway, it's that's what the Mandela effect is. Very, very interesting. Well, that, that's conspiracy theory for you, Beatles. You're going to take that away now, and you're going to go check it out going, find us something. This is really weird, and it's just kind of funny that he, he came up with it. But Yeah, conspiracy theorists, you know, I mean, just the conspiracy theories in general, not, not so much the theorists, but the theories in general are just, you know, they're, they're amusing. They're, they're fun. Exactly. It's fun to talk about, you know. People go, people go the opposite side where they end up, you know, living in their parents' basement, and they got a tinfoil hat on and all kinds of stuff like that. You shouldn't do that, but it, it's fun yeah. to talk about. It's just, it's amusing, if anything, right? <laughs> well, exactly. That's, that's the whole point of this conversation. It's entertainment. It's not me saying, I'm, you know, a believer of Mandela and I'm a believer of this. Oh, what I heard, man. <laughs> exactly. Right. exactly. I, I'm only commenting on my memories that are failing because I'm getting old and I'm getting a bit gray and scruffy here. And, you know, it's my age talking, man. That's all I can say. The rest of it, you guys Google it for yourselves and make your own opinion. We're not here to give financial advice. We're not here to give you like conspiracy theory advice. (laughs) (laughs) If aliens exist, they can come out and they can visit us or they can stay hidden underground or they can stay up on the moon. I don't really care. That's okay. Leave us alone. You touched on well, so many different parts yeah, yeah. there that is a whole a whole uh, you know talk show all in itself. <laughs> <laughs> That's just why I said if you want to just be crazy, we're just gonna like go off on a limb or have a whole episode on just mad nut nuttiness because who cares? It's just because it's funny and and it's in it's interesting and people like this stuff. I mean, people, I mean, we're talking about it and we're mildly entertained with each other, thinking we're all strange now. You guys both think I'm really weird now, probably. <laughs> <laughs> that you, or that you really love James Bond movies. That's what I came away with this one. Um, I'm actually not that, I mean, <laughs> in my childhood, sure, when I was a kid, it was really fun, like James Bond was, you know, the guy that was like, you know, 007, that was all cool, but let's face it, I was more into other things like superheroes when I was a kid, you know, but I didn't meet any. I don't have any conspiracy theories on on superheroes or superhuman powers, you know, it's just, I haven't gotten that far yet, Beatles, I'm sorry. Man, did you guys watch Glass? No, what's that? No, not yet. No. I watched the other one, the the first, because because that was is that like a follow up to the it is un, un, Unbreakable, right? Yep, exactly. Now, I don't want to wreck it for you guys. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, he's he's looking for superheroes, and so oh, that's fun. Yeah. So Samuel Jackson is basically you know kind of this evil genius of sorts that's going around doing terrible things, trying to get heroes to rise up, or be able to find you know people that have super strengths or powers or whatever through these, these horrible events that he basically creates. And so anyways, this is kind of like the, uh, the sequel to Unbreak. So if you just want to watch it, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to give away the, uh, the ending for it. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say to that other than I've got a superhero on the show. Who, when I, re- when I interviewed him, he didn't have a beard, but somehow 
he has a beard now, and I'm just completely confused about that now. So I'm having my Mandela effect right here live on the show. <laughs> we live in the matrix, my friend. Um, that must be it. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if you, you've said that several times. I'm beginning to wonder you actually believe that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm just agreeing with you, buddy. He's a Bitcoin. He's a digital currency in disguise. That's it. Yeah, I'm a bit beetle. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess this is a good point. This is a good off ramp now because we just got so strange. <laughs> Well, you can always bring me back anytime you guys want to talk about some conspiracy theories. They're always always fun for people. They'd actually be better to do it probably uh, live and have the chat rolling so they can start uh, you yeah, know, feeding. Yeah, I was going to say, let's just do that yeah. and ask anybody else who wants to jump in. We'll just do a live episode on one of our channels and just have some fun with it and research stuff and let people throw it out there at us and we'll just have a bit of a laugh with the whole thing and see what we're aware of and what we're not and what people come up with. But that's always fun. Yeah. Get our brains off crypto for a minute. Yeah, I was gonna say, let's take a break from crypto and talk conspiracy <laughs> theory instead. It just starts with the C and it's still so interesting. <laughs> yep, no, no. crypto, conspiracy, it's all the same thing. We're all the Cs, you know, it's all good. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it, man. Well, thanks yeah. for having me on, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Thank, thank you, Robert. You. It's great. been a real pleasure. And um, thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. I will put a link down below to, to Beatles. So you can check out his show. And if you haven't already subscribed, then go subscribe because you might even have a chance to win some money on his show um, because he does giveaways just like us. So check it out. He's an awesome guy. Great guests. Sometimes we have overlapping guests. That's even better because then we get totally different stories out of the same people. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Robert, thanks very much for taking the time out today. Um, safe travels. And uh, we'll be back again soon, everybody. To the moon. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. Until next time.